scientific notation is a way to write really big or really small numbers kind of using a, a shorthand system. Um, so in scientific notation, the general format that we're going to look at is shown here where we have y times 10 to the x. So the y part is going to be a coefficient, and that's going to be a number between 1 and 10. Um, more exactly, the number is going to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So greater than or equal to 1. So it can be exactly 1, but it has to be less than 10. So it can't be 10. It could be like 9.9999, um, but it has to be less than 10. Um, and then times 10 to the x, where x is any positive or negative whole number. So there's going to be no decimal points up there in that x part of the um, exponent. Um, since we just talked about significant figures, one thing I want to mention about uh, scientific notation is that the coefficient determines the number of significant figures. So however many significant figures there are in this y term is going to determine how many significant figures this entire um, number has. All right, so let's look at some examples of this. Uh, if it says convert these numbers to scientific notation, um, if you have 2,500, uh, basically what you do is you take the decimal point. Now, I know there's not a decimal point shown there. However, you could imagine that there's a decimal point shown there after the zero, right? That would be after the ones column. And if you move it to the left one, two, three times, that gives you a number between one and 10. It gets you to 2.5. And then it says multiply the result by 10 to the x, where x is the number of decimal places moved. If you move it to the left, x is positive. If you move it to the right, x is negative. Um, another way to do that is large numbers are always going to have a positive exponent. So 2,500 is a large number. In other words, it's greater than zero. Um, or sorry, I should say greater than one. Um, so this number is greater than one, so that's going to have a positive exponent. This number over here is going to be less than one, so you would have a negative exponent. Um, or you could say if you move the decimal place to the left, it's positive, or if you move the decimal to the right, it's negative. So 2.5 times 10 to the 3 would be this number. Again, two significant figures because we had two significant figures up here in our starting number. Um, 0 0.036, in order to turn that into scientific notation, we would move the decimal point one two times to get us to 3.6 because, again, that's a number between 1 and 10. We're moving it two times, so the exponent's going to be 2, but because it's a small number, it's going to be negative 2. So 3.6 times 10 to the negative 2 would be the answer here. Um, so for those numbers that we just looked at, you really don't need the scientific notation. Um, it's not that hard to write 2,500 um, or 0.036. However, if we were to, say, try to report the number of red blood cells that we have, well, this is the number down here. Um, it's 2 times 10 to the 13, or 20, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Like, that would get old fast trying to write that over and over and over again. So instead, right, instead of writing that number, 2 times 10 to the 13th is a much um, faster way of writing the number of blood cells. If we were to look at the diameter of a red blood cell, it's going to be a really small size, right? Red blood cells are microscopic and they're going to have a diameter of about 6 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. So again, instead of writing 0 .0000006, and then like if I'm reading that number, I have to sit there and try to figure out okay, exactly how many zeros are there before the 6 to really get a, a good gauge on how big that number is. Alternatively, by writing 6 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, that's a faster, kind of easier way to do it. Um, now, the other way to scale number to scale numbers um, is going to be something that we're going to we've talked a little bit about, and we're going to look at uh, more uh, soon. Is going to be to use those metric prefixes. So I will go ahead and tell you another way to write this six times ten to the negative six number would be to say you have six micrometers, right? So that would be kind of another way you could say that. And that's because if you remember, micro is the prefix of one million. So if you were to say, um, this is going to be, um, there's one million micrometers in a meter. So if you took this and multiplied it by a million, right, that would get you up to a meter. 
So again, using uh, those metric prefixes is another way you can help scale these numbers um, and write them in an easier format than using a whole lot of zeros like you see here. All right, so converting a number in scientific notation um, to a standard number and vice versa. So we're going to take all of these um, these standard numbers and convert them to scientific notation. And then we will do a couple where we go the other way around. So in this case, there's not a decimal point, but we can imagine one there. And we have to move it one, two, three, four times to get it over there. And that would be 2.56 times 10 to the, we had to move it four times. And we moved it to the left, so it's a positive number. I put 2.56 here because there's three significant figures, and we had three significant figures in that original uh, number. Now, the number two here is really the same number, right? 25,600, except this one's 25,600.0. This number, before we do worry about scientific notation, we should be able to look at this and say this number has six significant figures. These zeros are going to be significant because that decimal point is there. This zero out here to the right of the decimal point is going to be significant because it's after a decimal point, right? So they're all going to be significant. So whenever we go to write this number, it's going to be the same idea, except we have to write all of those zeros in order to make it clear how many significant figures we have in the answer, right? So again, I'm still moving the decimal point to the left four times but the number is different with this one up top here having three significant figures and this one down here having six. Um, this one down here, this one again, it's a smaller number, right? It's less than one, so we know this one, the exponent's going to be a negative exponent. We have to move the decimal point one, two, three, four, five times. So that's going to be one point three, five times 10 to the negative five. Um, for the next one, uh, first thing, let's look at significant figures, right? This one has one, two, three, four, that zero is going to be significant, right? Because it's at the end of a number with the decimal point. So this one has five significant figures. So we're gonna move the decimal point to the right. We're gonna move it one, two, three, four times. We're going to have 1.5210 times 10 to the negative 4. And the last one, we have to move the decimal point to the right, uh, 1, 2. So this one would be 2.51 times 10 to the negative 2. Now, if we wanted to do a couple examples of going from scientific notation to a standard number, you're basically doing the same thing in reverse. Um, so if we had 3.17 times 10 to the 5, you would basically write 317, right? 3.17 now times 10 to the 5 means we have to move the decimal point to the right to make this a bigger number. We have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you just fill in zeros where those were. So this number would be... 317,000, right? So now you could imagine kind of rechecking our work. If the decimal point was there to make it 3.17, we move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to have the decimal point. It would show up there. We don't write it there because that would indicate significant figures, but because we, we really only have three significant figures here. Now, if you had a smaller number like 4.5, uh, 6, 1 times 10 to the negative 3, you basically do the same thing. You write your 4.61, um, and now when you do to the negative 3, we have to move the decimal point the other direction. So you have to move it 1 time, 2 times, 3 times, fill in those extra spots with zeros, and move the decimal point over there, and that would give us 0 0.00461. I always, by the way, um, like to put the zero in front of the decimal point just to make it make the decimal point almost stand out a bit more. Um, you don't have to write that. I, I recommend putting it there um, just because otherwise it, it might look like a random little dot on the screen. But now it's pretty clear that there's a zero between the two. 
but in terms of reading that number, you would still say it's 0 0.00461, which is what we had over there. All right, so this is, again, examples in going um, both directions in dealing with scientific notation.